Let's take a look at SQL Server Profiler now. You'll notice I've opened the SQL Server Management Studio. And so to kick off Profiler, you'll notice that if I go up to Tools, SQL Server Profiler, there it is, and we will kick this off. Now notice it comes up, and this is a little bit, not deceptive, but if you'll notice, this isn't actually, I'm going to make it a little smaller. It's a separate window that is kicked off outside of the Management Studio. Okay? Now, this is the profiler. Well, the first thing I want to do is, if I look at the toolbar here, or I can do File, I want to do a new trace. Now, when I start to do a trace, this means, and a trace is simply captured data. So to create a trace, I'm going to have to tell it exactly which SQL Server I want to connect to, or which database do I want to run the profiler against. So I'm going to run it against my named instance, which is Mark. So I connect to Mark, and notice now, these are my trace properties. First thing I'm going to do is give it a name, and so I'll do, I'll call it Mark Test Trace. And then there are templates that I can use for the various things that happen, and you can go in and just kind of play with these and look. But I'll just do the standard one for the default. Now, notice my choices here. I can save these results to a file, and I can tell it, notice a TRC file. And this is what I'll generally want to do on things like uh, index tuning wizards and some other jobs. Or, and this is really cool, I can save it to a table. Now notice, if I save it to a table, I have to log in to a database, and I'm going to put it in that sales table, and I will call the table the my mark test trace, okay? Notice I can even set the maximum rows and thousands if I would like, if I'm concerned about how much data I'm going to get. And I can set a, tra a trace stop time. Now, you may want this thing to run for a couple of hours. You may want it to run longer than that, less than that. Keep in mind, this will put a load on your server because it's recording everything that happens. For now, we'll stop it manually. This next tab is the big one. This has told it the name of the trace, the template, where to put it. The event selection, I want you to see this. This is different from SQL 2000 considerably. But notice, I now have the different events and so forth. So notice right now in this template, I've got a security audit event, sessions events, store procedures events, and T-SQL events. So notice on the security audit event, I'm saying let's audit logins. When a login happens, show me, and I'll separate some of these, show me the text data, show me the application name for the login, show me the NT username, Show me the login name, the CPU, the reads, the writes, and you can go out and look in the documentation, SQL Books Online, to see what all these things mean. You can go look under Profiler. So notice I'm simply choosing my events and then the particular items within the events that I want to report on. And so notice, if I don't want to see the reads on a logout, I just simply clear this off. If I don't want to see duration, I can turn that off and I won't see it in my report. Now. This is kind of cool, but watch what happens here. I want to see all the events that I can pull. Notice how many events are out here. And I'm going to shrink security audit. Actually, I'll shrink all of them so you can just see what's out there. Notice that's how many events we can pull information on. So the common language runtime, we have, we can see an assembly load, and we can automatically see what all is happening there. Uh, on our database, we can see when the database auto grows, uh, the file grows, when the log auto grows, just a tremendous amount of information that you can see here. So we will leave it the way it is. We've got security audit, and notice on the security audits, we're not even getting, gosh, one one fiftieth of what all is out there. There's all kind of information we can get. On the uh, show all columns, we can see all the columns that are out there. Notice we can see all kind of big integer data, column permissions, the database username. I mean, there's just an unbelievable amount of information you can get. I think you get the picture, right? So what I'm ready to do now is run this. And so I'm going to actually run this in the next video and show you how we can use this data and what we can see in it.